This may not look like much, but believe it or not, this may be the wave of the technological future. This here is a 3D printer. 3D printing is a quickly growing field of technology that allows scientists and average citizens the ability to create cheap toys, prosthetic limbs, food, machine parts, and a host of other items that range from useful to essential in everyday life. It might not look like much here, but the reality is that 3D printers are quickly becoming capable of producing items that are leaving lawmakers scratching their heads. Before 3D printing reached the mainstream, it was used primarily by scientists and research developers creating cheap prototypes of their work. Beginning in 1984, with the birth of 3D printing, created by 3D Charles printers Wool. use computer-aided designs, or CAD files, to create three-dimensional structures that are designed by users. The design is sent from the computer to the printer, which uses a variety of materials to build the design from the bottom up, thin layer by layer. It can use plastic, metal, food, and more recently, human cells. Various types of printers are used to create different structures and can range from industrial-sized printers in laboratories to small-scale home-use printers. All it takes is a computer, printer, and basic understanding of design to create anything from a fork or a dog toy to a human organ used in transplants. The benefits of 3D printing are quickly becoming a reality. In recent years, scientists, such as Anthony Italia, have been working on creating human organs to eliminate the need for organ donors. Using the cells of the patient themselves, a biomaterial scaffold, and a 3D printer, scientists are able to produce organs that are accepted by the patient, eliminating the number one problem of organ donation, finding a match. Also, scientists and prosthetic manufacturers are able to create cheaper and better limbs for amputees. They can also be more readily replaced. Another change that 3D printing has the capability to bring to the world is a revolution in the distribution and sales of consumer goods. Rather than relying on manufacturers and large-scale distributors such as Amazon, 3D printing is giving consumers the ability to cut out the middleman. Rather than going to the traditional brick-and-mortar stores, consumers with 3D printers in their homes will be able to find designs online, or create their own, and print them directly into their home. While 3D printers for everyone is still a few years away in the future, the potential to democratize the sale of consumer goods has a bright future that is causing manufacturers and distributors some concern. Websites have been created where anyone can upload and sell blueprints for their designs. This free sharing of designs for home use of 3D printing is where several new controversies have been introduced. As citizens, lawmakers, and governments around the world are quickly finding out, the internet has given greater autonomy to the average person and introduced legal problems unforeseeable to writers of constitutions as recent as 20 years ago. Copyright law is now under greater scrutiny as the free download of ideas are being stolen from various websites. Uh, they don't imagine worlds where it creates problems and kills people. When Bree and MakerBot and those guys developed these 3D printers, they imagined people making clothes hooks and baby pins and all of these wonderful things that make the world a better place. They had no concept, none of us had any concept, that these things would be used to create weapons that would kill people. However, most notably, there is a field of 3D printing that has added a new layer to an already highly volatile, emotional, and constantly unresolved argument that leaves Americans constantly divided. Guns and freedom. You have people like Cody that come along um, and look at something that you think is a cute little kitten and realize that he can program it to kill people. This is Cody Wilson, a 25-year-old law student at the University of Texas and founder of the nonprofit organization Defense Distributed. He is at the center of the debate surrounding 3D printed firearms. Defense Distributed made waves not only for creating a firearm that is untraceable in metal detectors and capable of being made in one's home, but more so by putting the downloadable CAD file, or its blueprint, available for free on its website. Wilson, a self-described crypto-anarchist, says this is more about making a political statement than anything Britain. else. And maybe it's naive for me to think that it is, but this is a symbol that you can make something important for yourself, something they don't want you to have, and especially after Sandy Hook, in a moment, they really don't want you to have it. Um, that's that's Im important that people can people can say, oh wow, you know, real politics is uh, I can do whatever I want, regardless of what the state blares at me through the TV and on the radio all the time. It's just teaching contempt for the legislative process. Joe Biden, this is no country for old men. 
In addition to designing a fully 3D printed handgun, Defense Distributed is working on designing and distributing the lower receiver of the highly versatile AR-15 assault rifle, a military grade weapon. Although experiencing initial setbacks due to the high power and recoil of the weapon, they have managed to design one that lasts 600 rounds before breaking. Currently, although harmless on its own, the lower receiver is what is considered by law to be a gun, and therefore what is regulated when distributed. It contains a serial number that must be registered with the government if it is to be sold. The part of the law Wilson and others are exposing is that it is entirely within the law to create your own firearm in the safety of your home. As long as you do not plan on selling or distributing it, it is entirely legal. In fact, Americans have been doing this for a very long time, using other machines and metalworking skills that outdate 3D printers. Allows this. I mean, people have carved lowers out of wood. You know, this isn't, we're not trying to say like, oh, you know, here it is. We're trying to prove a point. They're like, look, you can print this out of plastic. And just to take the New York Times point specifically, you can do this in your bedroom. You know, it's to prove this political point that, look, uh, gun control doesn't mean what it meant in 1994. Despite this argument that making guns at home is nothing new and therefore nothing additional to fear, gun making has been a highly difficult and precise skill that has been available to a select few. Indeed, the consequences of doing it wrong are severe and potentially deadly. Now, however, 3D printing is on a trajectory where it may soon be available to a vast number of average citizens. Additionally, it will take no skill whatsoever to download and freely create a firearm in your own home that is unregistered and in some cases untraceable. There are currently restrictions on firearms that cannot be traced to metal detectors. The Undetectable Firearms Act was passed in 1988 by President Reagan, banning all firearms that can't be detected in metal detectors. The ban has been renewed twice and most recently was voted by the House of Representatives to be renewed on December 3, 2013. It awaits Senate approval. Defense Distributors Liberator Handgun has a block of steel in it to be compliant with the ban. However, this steel block is removable and has nothing to do with the functionality of the weapon. The government's response has been an order by the State Department to Wilson and Defense Distributed to remove the blueprints for the Liberator from their website, defcad.org, on the grounds of a potential violation of the International Traffic in Arms Regulation Export Laws. The group was also demanded to remove several other weapons accessories, such as silencers, extended magazines, and other tactical weapon upgrades. They've been actually discussing what is legal and what is not. This was an entirely new thing. They knew that it was illegal to own this part for a gun without having it registered and so on. But when you can make the part for the gun, that you know changes the whole course of the conversation. For Wilson and many others, this is more than just adding another dimension to the gun debate. It is a promotion of his political views and trying to show how anarchy is the natural state of humanity. He is a political figure and 3D printers are his method of showing how his beliefs can be realities. His argument shows that while this new and fascinating technology has the potential to save lives and improve the quality of living, there is no true way to regulate the human condition. There are always people who want to help humanity and others who want to take advantage of anything they can. Some men just want to watch the world burn. 3D printing brings a consumer's imagination to life, offering the potential to customize anything and shape the world to what they see fit. It is the potential manifestation of what the human mind can imagine. It puts the power of creation in the average person's computer room. If you can think it, you can print it. That is what makes this technology so beautiful and so frightening, because as human history has shown, a little power to a few people can go a long way. People will know the name AR-15 today because it was infamously used in the Newtown, Connecticut mass shootings. That's true. And you're providing people a digital blueprint to replicate the regulated part of that gun. That's right, that's right, yeah. That will upset a whole lot of people for military purposes. Mm -hmm. That's right. It's a people killer. That's right. That's what a gun is, you know, at its essence. I mean, let's, let's not talk about, you know, turkey shooting and, and hog hunting and stuff. I mean, what, what is a gun? A gun is a combat weapon, you know? And you want to give people a file to build one. That's right, yeah.